In this presentation, we are going to look at probability distributions with R. This is a statistics with R presentation, and it's intended as an introduction to, uh, to R for actuarial students. So the, this corresponds to the CS1B curriculum, and that is a introduction to R programming with the fundamentals of statistical analysis, data analysis, and so on, and probability distributions. And in fact, this does actually feature a dot probability distribution. This is a question one, and it features the gamma distribution, how to work with it in R. So we have a data set here called motor claims, and I have this saved in the working directory. Okay, so I can just access it there and import it into R using this command called read.csv. Uh, I have it there saved in my folder as claims.csv, so I import it and just call it claims. Okay, so just have a quick look at it there, and it turns out, head of claims, this actually just prints out the first six rows. So it is a single, it's a data frame that contains one column, and that is also called claims capital C, okay? We're gonna stick with that, just watch out for it, but this is the name of the data frame, and this is the name of the one of the columns, in fact, the only column in this instance in that data frame. Okay, we can have a quick look at it there, the summary of the claims. This is actually interesting, and become relevant later on. The mean, the median, and the interquartile range, or actually Q1 and Q3, okay? The minimum and maximum, not so much. Now, the reason is that because we're going to sort of check how we do things using these, just to sort of compare them to hypothetical values. Uh, there are 100 claims in this data set. So it's 100 rows, which is 100 cases, and one column. Okay. Now, the questions are, I'm going to just take out three to start with, and then I'll go with the other ones after the fact. So the fit the gamma distribution on the data set, but by determining its scale and shape parameters. Now this is important. The reason is that there are multiple different ways of specifying the gamma distribution, okay? And as it turns out that that's not the default way you would do it with R, you would actually use the shape parameter, alpha, and the rate parameter, which is one over the scale parameter. We usually call it lambda, which is one over theta. Anyway, we'll come back to that shortly. Clearly state the assumptions, uh, uh, state clearly the distribution with the parameters, okay. Uh, simulate 1,000 values from the distribution obtained in part one and print the first six values. Set seed to 100 and calculate the mean and the variance of the simulated results. Right, so first off what we're gonna do is calculate the mean and the variance of the, the original data set that we were given. We have 100 claim values and we're going to get the mean and the standard deviation and the variance. Actually, I'm going to use the mean. This is the sample mean, 18,672.76. I'm not going to use that this time around, but that's how you get the standard deviation. And the variance there is 161,323,000 921. Okay, now I have that saved as X bar and variance, okay? Now, what we're going to do is calculate the estimates for the scale parameter and the shape parameter. Actually, just as a quick remark, usually you sort of uh, start with the shape parameter uh, because it's common to all, and then that use, so that usually goes first, and then the scale parameter. But just what happens in this instance is that the... Scale parameter is actually quite easy to calculate if you have the variance and the expected value. You just divide the variance by the expected value. And the sh so it's just easier, basically. And the shape parameter is the expected value squared divided by the variance. It's not really that important, really. Essentially, this is how we calculate them there. The scale parameter theta is variance divided by x bar, and we get 8,639.533. The shape parameter alpha is x bar squared divided by the variance, and that is alpha. That is 2.161316. Okay. Now, when we specify, usually you specify this first and then this. Okay. The alpha, the shape parameter first, and then the scale parameter. Okay. And that's going to be important later on because what we're going to do is try and match that up. But just take a note that the first quartile, Q1, is 999, or 9,919. Sorry, and 914. 
So it's about 10,000 and Q3 is around 25,000 and the median is around 16,000. Just ballpark figures there. Just keep that in mind. The reason is we're going to compare that to hypothetical analytical values. Yeah, compare this to analytical values. So Q gamma, this gives the, this is how we calculate the, the Q1 for the population of values. This is the hypothetical, the, sorry, the analytical Q1. 9,337. Let's go back. That's not bad. Close enough. It's only a sample of 100, remember. Uh, 15,885. Yeah, also close enough. I'm happy with that. And 25,000. And six, yeah. So I'm happy enough that we have done a good job in, you know, simulating, that we've correctly identified it. Okay. So just a formal statement here. Uh, this is the one of the questions we're asked to do. X is a gamma random variable with shape parameter alpha equals 2.16 and a scale parameter theta equals 8639.533. Now you can actually specify it in terms of the shape parameter alpha and the rate parameter lambda where lambda equals 1 over theta and the reason why this is important is because actually the default setting for R is working on the basis of the rate parameter where we go 1 over 8639 so but we can just sort of stay on course with the scale parameter by just staying stating explicitly scale equals into code okay so just watch out when I use that uh, yeah, but let's just test out the rate parameter. Lambda equals 1 over theta. Okay, so it's this number here. 0 0.0001157747. Okay. And when I spec look for those quartiles, Q1 and Q3, for the analytical results and also the median, the population quartiles and the population median, I get the same number. So that syncs up properly, okay? Uh, if it push comes to shove, you don't actually need this because the default setting is for that you specify the rate. So that try this command without rate equals. You should get the same result. Okay. So exercise two asks us to generate 1,000 observations based on alpha the alpha value we're given and the theta, uh, the alpha value we have estimated and the theta value we have estimated. Also, we're just, notice I'm using scale equals here. And we've set the seed equal to 100. And we're asked to print out the first six values. So those are the first six values there. Okay, so that's what you should be getting. Now, let's just double check this again. So our theoretical Q1 is 9,337. This is 8,767. Not far off. Uh, 1, 000, sorry, 15,885. So there, the in our sample, we have 16,223. Close enough, happy enough. Uh, 25,006.17, okay. There we have 24,954.9. That's very close. I'm happy we have done a good job. Now, there are, of course, going to be sampling fluctuations. So we will never get it perfectly matching up. Also, just to emphasize, we don't really pay that much attention to max and min because, it, you know, the tails, you know, can't, doesn't tell us much. So the mean of the samples is 18,423. 47 and the variance is 153 million 958,637 okay so um actually was i asked that let's just go back to the question oh yeah calculate the mean and the variance of the simulated value so we have done questions one to three done now obtain a qq plot for the simulations of the 1000 values and a normal distribution. Okay, so essentially what we have to do is just test if it's a normal distribution and add a line to the above plot to show the true position of the normal distribution. Okay, and then comment. So let's just go down here. So the command is, essentially we have this 
in, in memory now this is our 1000 values and it is called samples so just to start with we go qq norm that actually provides the quantile plot the qq plot the normal probability plot and qq means quantile quantile so we're comparing the quantiles from our sample to theoretical quantiles from the normal distribution okay and this is what we will get if we do that okay so it sort of looks like a very curved anyway so we just make it a little bit easier to look at by adding plot character equals 16 and color equals blue okay just if we want that's look you know it's a bit of an improvement I, I like a bit of color that's just me now also what we are going to do is add in a line just to test if you know what the normal distribution what the trend line would be for the normal distribution okay so this line here would tell us give an indication that if the sample was normally distributed it should lie along this line now we can see that it doesn't it there's it, it's curved here it goes off here for a while it does follow the trend line not too bad and then up on the right hand side it, it peels off again so it's sort of banana shaped essentially okay so it's close to normal in the middle values but ultimately it's banana shaped so which indicates a positive skew and if we get a histogram that's what it would look like there so th that's not bell shaped okay so it doesn't have the bell curve shape so it's definitely not a normal distribution right okay we'll leave it there